question for you guys out there. Have you ever wanted to customize and paint your own Nerf Blaster? but have just been a little bit too nervous to give it a try? Well, it's time to get over those fears, my friends, because here on the CJ Nerf channel, we're kicking off a brand new video series titled How to Spray Paint Nerf Guns. This video series is one in particular that I've been really wanting to do for quite some time. So this is gonna be a simple, easy to follow tutorial from beginning to end. In this detailed tutorial, you're gonna learn how to do all of the following. And in addition to all of that, I'm gonna provide you with every single thing that I use to complete whatever paint mod or blaster we are actually doing. Most of that stuff will be linked up in the description. I don't link up everything just because some of this stuff can simply be found around your home. So to keep things simple and pretty much inexpensive on the very first blaster we're going to use, I chose the Nerf Elite Fire Strike, relatively coming in at around $9, $10. Not the cheapest blaster by any means, but this blaster has a lot of good nicks and crannies and is a pretty cool pistol overall, and it's simple to actually paint. Quick look at all of the supplies that I basically keep on hand at all times whenever I'm planning on doing whatever the next paint mod will be. So let's go over them in detail. First of all, I have painter's tape, which is the blue tape. Actually, you can get it in any width you want. I chose that width. And then I have two different sizes of regular masking tape. Whenever I'm using tape, I definitely pull out my X-Acto kit, which gives me tons of ways to do more accurate edging whenever I'm taping off blasters. Now you can go over to sandpaper. I actually use two different types. I use the 220 for very fine and the 120 for medium. Uh, they come out in these big sheets right here and you simply cut off little squares of whatever you need. So I use the medium to actually get off whatever logos I wanna get off. And then I use the finer grit to actually sand it down and make it smooth. Um, I definitely do recommend some magnetic screwdrivers if you can get those. Um, they actually help get the screws out of the blasters a lot easier. And overall, I just think they're worth the money. Basic pair of scissors, and if you don't want to use an X-Acto knife, make sure you have a little bit of a razor knife somewhere. If you don't want to go ahead and invest in sandpaper like I did, uh, keep in mind I've actually had this sandpaper kits, both of these, for probably close to five years. So it's basically a one-time purchase and it'll last you for a very long time. But you can get by with some simple Scotch-Brite heavy-duty scour pads. I would recommend some magnetic parts trays if you are interested in just paying a little bit extra. Uh, we all know what it's like to miss a screw or a spring. The magnetic trays actually hold them in place. Next is just a simple Amazon box with the sides cut out. I use this to hold parts to a specific blaster. This way they don't get mixed up with other projects I might currently be working on. That's optional by the way. I would definitely say get a pair of safety glasses for any time you are sanding or doing any kind of shell work. You don't want to get slivers in your eyes. Definitely use a towel so you can actually protect the blaster that you're working on and not have the shell get scratched. So if you guys decide to do hand painting for your accents like I do with Citadel layer paints, you're definitely going to need some brushes. My friends, you can spend a lot of money on brushes if you're not careful. You don't need to break the bank. Just find yourself a nice kit that gives you a wide array of brushes. I actually bought two. I think this white kit is actually only about seven bucks on Amazon. So you don't have to break the bank. Just make sure you have different type of brush heads so you can address any situation that might come up on whatever specific blaster you're painting. Now, as far as the Citadel layer paints, um, they have a layer paint set, which is this one, and they also have a base paint set or you can buy individual paints like down here. Like if you see that Abaddon black one, that's a base paint, okay? This kit right here comes with several different paints included. And of course, if there's a color that you want that's not in there, you can buy it pretty much solo on Amazon. Now this is gonna be a tip later on in the video, but I would highly recommend you might get some of these Sharpie oil-based paint pens. I haven't seen them in acrylic, so the only ones I've been able to find have been um, oil-based. So you gotta be careful but these are really cool for something I'm gonna show you a little bit later. And you can find these at like AC Moore or any of your local Michaels. Moving on, I would definitely say to get yourself a pair of latex gloves so you can paint and with spray paint and not actually get it all over the place. But of course that's optional. Now, of course, anytime you're doing paintbrush work, you're gonna want a plastic cup filled up with water so you can actually rinse off your brushes. Now, moving on to the spray paint that I technically use for base coating, I use Duplicator Vinyl Dye Flat Black. I don't use gloss, I use the flat version. I get the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Matte Clear Coat. I prefer a less glossy finish. And in this case, I'm gonna use for today's uh, video, this is a Deep Jewel Green, I think that's what it's called. It'll be linked up in the description, by the way. 
and that'll be my top coat after I lay the base coat. Of course, you're gonna need some paper towels so you can actually dip in the water if you need to fix any kind of mistake on the blaster itself before the paint dries. Anytime you're using spray paint, I would definitely recommend a respirator mask. I just replaced mine, haven't even opened it yet, so it'll be new for this video. I did buy some extra filters just in case, so I'm prepared to go either way. And of course, when I'm sanding, I would definitely get some dust masks. I actually bought the wrong ones. I gotta return these. That's for normal household dust. So whatever ones you're, you're gonna get, just make sure they're good for like sanding, for like paint work, okay? So that's gonna do it for everything that I keep for paint jobs on a normal basis. So let's get right into disassembly of the Nerf Fire Strike. Let's get it out of the package. All right, here we are, ready to go. Let's get this thing disassembled. Once you get all the screws out, the only screw that is actually smaller is the one that's on the battery door, but I actually leave it in there, so that's not a big deal to worry about. The rest of the screws you can actually gather up, go ahead and put them in your magnetic parts tray or however you want to keep a hold of them. A couple of things that I do not recommend painting on any blaster whatsoever is one is the orange on the barrel. Um, I do have a few blasters that are painted like that. Most of them were not done by me, um, but to keep it basically designated as a toy, definitely leave the orange parts in, as well as any moving parts. I would not paint the priming handle, the trigger, or the light switch right here. Definitely leave those orange. It'll actually give the blaster paint job some cool features. So let's get this thing split and get a look at the insides. All right, there we go. Now, one thing I would definitely recommend after you get this separated is go ahead and take a picture of the internals. This way, in case a spring pops up, or something moves out of place, you have a reference to go back and put it together. So let's start putting stuff into the box. All right, take that piece out. All right, now I'm gonna take this whole assembly and just lay it in the box as is. Now, when you take this piece off, make sure you don't lose that spring. If you do, you won't be able to put attachments on your blaster. Now, here's the light trigger. Now, I personally don't really care about this tactical light, so if you wanna just remove this and not put it back, you can, but it simply pulls out very easily, and it's very easy to go actually back in the blaster if need be. And that leaves you with your empty shell, my friends. Now here is one of the reasons I think the Fire Strike is an excellent starter pistol to actually paint. If you pull back on these three tabs right here, you can actually separate this gray piece from the actual orange top piece, thus making it way easier to paint, like so. So my friends, as you can now see, we have the two separated top halves, the two separated bottom halves, and all of our parts are neatly arranged in the box, simple to just plug back in once the paint job is complete. My friends, that's gonna end part one of our Fire Strike spray paint tutorial. Future videos will get far faster into the workflow, but since this was the very first video in this new video series that I'm running, I really wanted to give you guys a very detailed look at all of the different products that I keep basically in stock at all times to get ready to do new paint jobs. Not to mention, I really wanted to give you a good idea of what this Blaster Series playlist was gonna be about. So guys, if you have a particular Blaster you wanna see in future episodes of this, drop it in the comment section and let me know. If you're interested in following along as this tutorial in part two, hey man, get your fire strikes out, get your supplies. I'll see you in a few days. Thank you.